Welcome to the Automate and Grow podcast. Okay, we're here for a special edition of the Automate and Grow podcast. I'm here with Melanie Johnson from Elite Online Publishing. And Melanie and I met again through the Grant Cardone 10X Ambassador Program. So she was a participant in that program and also attended the 10X Growth Con in Las Vegas. So Melanie, thanks for joining me today. Hey, great to be here. Thanks, Michael, for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, so a couple of things, I guess. One, you for the last three years have been working really in your own author publishing business. And I wanted to talk to you about that as a relatively new author myself. Um, and it sounds like you've had a tremendous amount of success. So I, so tell me about how you decided to get into this line of work, to, first of all. Well, you know, my background is TV. So I started out as a newscaster in Detroit. And then uh, my husband and I filed for a TV station down in Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. And we started a television station from scratch, an independent television station from the FCC. So we built it from the ground up, transmitter, tower, news and we were all news so i built a whole news station um i was in charge of the news department i was vice president of the company we ran a hundred million dollar business we started um built or uh, bought another tv station in dallas so we had two major tv stations in um, texas and it was probably one of the most fun challenging thrilling things i'd ever done is starting a business like that from scratch and um, getting it to work and getting it to cash flow um, and then you know life changes we um, I ended up getting divorced and um, then we sold that business and uh, I really looked at the internet as the future I really didn't think I wanted to get back into TV because I saw TV really declining and almost anyone could have their own TV or radio station I mean look at us right We're having a radio station here today this would so, have cost millions of dollars before right Exactly. I mean, millions what we had to start for the TV. So um, I just thought that was the cool way to go. And um, I had two monster houses. I had a 25,000 square foot house in Houston and a 13,000 square foot house. in 13,000? Yeah. So what? I had a lot of real estate, okay? <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes. That's crazy. So um, when we got divorced, he kind of made the business go upside down and left me in a lurch so I figured out how to monetize those houses while I was trying to keep them alive and away from the bank and I created the HoustonMansion.com and WallandLake.com and I ended up renting those homes and had a six-figure business with Damn. Rent, all with online business all with online uh, traffic so um, then the house is finally sold and then uh, I had nowhere to live you know I had to buy a new house <laughs> and uh, I was out of a job so um, I started doing real estate development but also during that time, always kept my foot in the door of going to marketing and internet um, and digital things going on in the world and learned how to publish and started publishing a book. Um, and then a friend of mine there, we got together. I have this timeshare that I use for charities down in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it's a villa down there. And she's like, man, we need to monetize your villa. It can't just be for fun. Let's do a book writing retreat down there. So during the breaks of this conference, we created the website, we did a video, we created a Facebook page, and we launched um, Hot Chicks Write Hot Books on the Beach. Hot, wait, it's Hot Chicks Write. Hot Books on the Beach. Oh, I thought you said Hot Chicks Write Books on the Beach. Yeah, pretty much. Hot Chicks Write Hot Books <laughs> on the Beach. <Yeah. laughs> wow. So All right. We had our first successful book writing retreat down in the Dominican Republic, and we just thought, hey, it'll be fun to do it like once a year. Well, I came home and oil started crashing and people started saying, hey, I didn't know you could publish books. And so people started asking me to publish their books and um, the book business started to take off. You know how God kind of puts things in your life and things just happen with to you and you start going with it. So um, the Elite Online Publishing was born. And since then, we have over 50 titles that have become best-selling uh, authors, 50 authors we've made number one on Amazon. Uh, we have authors that have left their sales job and became a consultant and speaker, and they now make $12,000 every time they go out. Amazing. And, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, that's what I love about it. You see the metamorphosis in someone transform once they have a book. And um, what we do is really teach them how to leverage their book as an advertising tool. With my background in TV, you realize, I mean, I sold airtime, but it, it evaporates. Like you have a commercial and then it's gone. Right. I, that's why when I send someone a proposal for a book, I call it an investment because you really don't invest in TV advertising or invest in a billboard because it evaporates. 
but a book never goes away. Very right? true. Always. And you can always update it. You can use it in so many different ways to promote your business, whether you're giving it away or using it as a lead funnel, use it when you're speaking. Um, we tell some people, hey, you want everyone to know who, who you are at a certain company? Send a book to every single person in the office on the same day. That makes sense. And it's like the overwhelm of, hey, look, did you get yours? <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody in that office is talking about the book, including if you send one to the owner. What an impact that makes, right? So we go through like 20 different ways um, for people to use their book. Um, and then on top of that, we have another division of our company where um, we have over 1,500 titles of our own imprint from Elite Online Publishing that we've launched. So it's been a really fun business and a fun journey. My business partner is Jen Foster, and she lives in Salt Lake City, and I'm in Houston. Wow. And we're single moms. Um, she's got three kids. I've got two kids, and uh, we just make it work. That's incredible. So you've built the, I mean, I, I didn't realize, and we talked quite a bit before we came on, but it didn't even get to the point where you had a TV station. So now you have also created your own podcast, which is kind of like where you're leveraging your broadcast experience. And what's that process been like? That has been, I recommend like everyone should have a podcast. There was um, a guy that I connected with on the plane and um, we're helping him build a sales funnel. And he's like, oh, let me ask you, should we have a podcast? I noticed everyone at 10X, every speaker at 10X had a podcast. Right. Should I have a podcast? And the answer, <clears throat> yes. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, for us, we've used it to be able to get in front of people. So it's worked both ways. We, um, it brands us, number one. So you get your message out there. You um, get to send uh, emails to people and let them know that, hey, I've got this cool information that's useful to you. So it gives you an excuse to be in front of your list. And then on top of it, you can create business opportunities. So we have closed deals with people that we've interviewed. And we even had someone that we interviewed that uh, they closed us on a deal. We bought wow, that's amazing. It can work both ways. And then... Um... How, how long have you been doing the podcast? Is that the same? Is it also three years or is it relatively new? A little bit less, but about uh, two years. Two years. Podcast, yeah. And then, uh, so the... the I the, Sister Radio and now um, on Alexa. Great. And then we, we played with your Alexa skill and that works really well. So that's awesome. I love yeah. that. And it's funny because whenever I go to speak, I ask people, uh, how many of you use Alexa? Because I want to let them know that you don't have to like open up an app. You can just use your Alexa and get my podcast. <laughs> and I, right. I, but it's funny. The response has been really different. Um, like I think I had one person at my last event in New York <laughs> that used it. So I'm starting to learn about that ecosystem just as far as like what the actual install base is. But I do think it's significant. I just don't think people understand why they own it. <laughs> yeah, it's growing. You know, I don't know all the. It's like your phone. Do you really know everything your phone does? So you get those emails Don't from Alexa all the time. Hey, this is what's new on Alexa. That's true. Uh, and I use maybe one percent of what it's capable of doing. And I don't, I don't know if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, but he's like all in on voice. So he, he's, he views that as a growth thing. I agree with him. So I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I, I'm excited about the possibilities there. As a loyal Alexa guy, I have like, I think I have like eight Echoes in different houses. So <laughs> if you guys need an Echo, you can call me. I probably can give you one. <laughs> Um, so, so tell me about some of the authors that you have and one, you know, stuff that maybe is exciting to you that is coming up or that you've worked on. What sort of people have you had that work with you? So we've got all different types of people. And, um, what's interesting is you think, well, if you're not in Houston or Salt Lake city, you need somebody local. We have clients, um, currently we've got a guy, uh, Jay Lucas, his book is coming out. He's running for Senate up in New Hampshire. Okay. Um, Mika Mossbacher, she um, was from Houston, but she lives in D.C., and she is um, a spokesperson on Fox News and PBS, and she's real um, involved in the Republican Party. Um, and, you know, we don't mix sides. We're, we're very non-partial. So we have another guy we're talking to who's running for Congress here in uh, Houston for a Democrat. And um, so we have people from all walks of life. We've got an author down in the Bahamas, Melissa Hall. She's phenomenal. We have another one in California. Um, we've got one up in um, Virginia. So we have clients all over the country. So I laugh. I say, I have some people I've never met in person. I just talk to them right. on the phone or, or via Zoom or Skype. Yep. And uh, so we work with everybody. And it doesn't matter where you are in your process, if it's just an idea 
or you already have your book written or you have it just outlined and so many people struggle with oh my gosh I don't want to have to write a book like it's daunting right even for you you were saying man I uh, Grant inspired you to get your book done sooner and to kick it out right and, uh, he did his his first book he said in three days and I, I you yeah. know I was like well my plan was 30 so I should be able to hit this <laughs> So a lot of people are talkers, but not writers. Mm. So one of the great ways to get your content out is you can speak your content. You know, you talk about your business at dinner parties all the time. Right. And you can tell someone exactly who you are. You tell it to clients all the time. So if you can just record that, organize it, and then we'll send it to a ghostwriter, um, have it transcribed and make it into a book for you. And another great way is if you have a blog post or a newsletter. So there are these couple of guys they had this blog post they've been writing for a while, and they decided to take the best of their blog post and turn it into a book. Smart. So they, not a lot more work, right? They took, picked out the blog post, sent it to the editor ghostwriter, they put it together, they slapped an intro on it, um, and then they launched the book. Then guess what? The book became a movie called The Minimalist. What? Here, they started with the content from the blog. Wait, The Minimalist is a movie? I thought that was a TV show. So they made a movie called The Minimalist. I think it's on Netflix. So we are really... Uh, I definitely have to check that out. <laughs> so we did that as well. We had our podcast when we first started it, and we took the first 30 podcasts, edited them down, and we made a book out of it. So Amazing. They interviewed authors about their tricks and tips on um, creating books and marketing books and created a book. So it's the same content. Use it over and over again. So that's why we say even with your podcast, we like to do a video one because then it's you get the audio for iTunes and Stitcher and Alexa, but then you have a video that you can put on YouTube, you can use it on social media. It just gives you so many other places to repurpose that same content and you used it, did it once and use it over and over again. That's amazing. So, and I, I put a video out recently, which I'll, I'll post up in the show notes about kind of what my process was to hit this. And I stretched it out to 45 days because I went back and cleaned it up. But I kind of explained what my process was. And it's funny that you mentioned the dictation part, because what I would do is there were some days where your brain gets like really overloaded because I was going yeah. brute force, right? <laughs> and my goal was 150 pages in my book. <clears throat> but that was Apple pages. So what, so when you formatted it, what it ended up being was a 260 page book, right? And a six by nine, right? But there were days, so I was, didn't realize how much content I was actually producing in a short amount of time. And there's days where I was stuck and I was like, no, no, I got to do five pages. <laughs> so I would, I, there were some days where I put together almost like a keynote presentation and then I read it and then I sent it off to rev.com. Yeah. Although I will say that the content on those days was needed to be mostly edited <laughs> you know so need to be cleaned up but it gave you bulk edit. right <laughs> yeah. yeah it's easier to edit than to start from scratch with that mm -hmm. exactly but something to work with then you can and then here's a tip too for if you feel like oh my gosh i've got to have 250 pages well we tell people you know short books are good too mm -hmm. um, as long as you have a minimum of 135 pages that's all you need because 135 pages you can have the name on the spine if it's less than oh, that that makes sense fine oh. you have a 135 or more then you get the name on the spine and that's 135 six by nine like formatted yep. uh -huh. got it so it's probably what like 80 pages in word or something like maybe i'm guessing <laughs> that's amazing well i i love hearing about these stories because you're probably you probably have like non-traditional authors that are understanding the power of writing a book and I, I think I've always, I've had this theory and, you know, we've both recently been through a program that included sales training and, and my, my going back, I'd written actually funny enough, I'd written a book on sales about 12, 15 years ago and I never published it because I don't think these tools existed then. So I, I almost feel like I need to go back and find that and probably rewrite parts of it. But, and There's content already out there that's not being used. You just it's not. It. It's it's like sitting on a disc somewhere, and I don't know where the disc is. Pro I know where the disc is. It's in storage. But um, it, there it, well, was a guy in our community that had kind of the same thing, like a book kind of sitting on the shelf, and the community of 10x. Mm -hmm. and so he pulled it out, um, cleaned it up, and then he did a sales funnel. He got 273 people what? in our Facebook community to opt in, and then he sold like 10 people. Wow, that's amazing. 
I'm slacking. I've, I've been like resistant to tell people about it. That's interesting. I need to go back and hit, the, yeah. <laughs> hit that list. <laughs> uh, what was interesting about, I think one of my, my philosophies in sales at the time is that there's different generations of sales methodologies and yeah. that people buy from who they trust and the people they trust the most are experts. And so the, the idea you know, behind writing a book, I think what you're saying is that you, know, you can demonstrate that expertise with a book. Right. I remember when I wrote my first book, I had gone to a party at Saks Fifth Avenue, a social gathering for a nonprofit. And um, they're like, Melanie, I haven't seen you in a long time. You know, what have you been doing? I said, well, I just finished a book. And I did not expect the response. Oh my gosh, you've written a book? Really? What's it called? What it's crazy, it? right? It was. Can you sign it for me? Yeah. I mean, people, yeah. <laughs> I did not expect it, and um, you know, you get in your community of other authors and in the marketing, and you think, oh, well, a lot of people are writing a book, but outside of that bubble, there's not a lot of people that are doing it, and the regular everyday people, they are just blown away that you've become an author, and really, like I said, we we our goal is to make every single author we work with the number one bestseller. And when you tell them, oh, yeah, and I'm a best-selling author, they're like, oh, my gosh. Then it just, like, raises to a whole nother level. And then we have to tell our authors, like, they like, they go, I can't believe I'm a bestseller. Like, it doesn't right. hit their head. And we got to go, all right, well, what does a number one bestseller walk into a room like? Like, you need to have that extra confidence. You need to own it. Makes now. sense. You know, because you've got people who are going to perceive you this way, so you need to own that. So I think one of the – so what I did for myself was I, I – I did a little tour, right? So I, uh, WeWork was amazing. So I don't know if you know what WeWork is, but the co-working, they're, they're, they have like over 200 co-working locations. They're kind of like the most valued startup that's out there. They're worth like 20 billion now. And um, they gave me free space wherever I went. So they have 17 locations in LA and they have 43 in New York. And then I have, I have a lot of network in San Francisco and in Toronto. And they gave me space to do book signings in each of those locations. And I think the biggest adjustment for me was showing up and people going two things that I had to get out of my own mindset on <laughs> was, oh, will you sign it for me? And I'm like, no, why would you want me to sign a book? This, that seems silly. Like, I don't get the point. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I immediately clued in that everybody loves to have the author to sign it. So I think there was like a thing where, you know, you, you kind of pointed it out. It's like, get out there, bring the right mindset. To when you show up to those events like walk in like a bestseller and i i had to change that because i'm i'm not real focused on me i'm more focused on the ideas in the book right but that was a big adjustment to to go in and make sure that you do a good job of signing i probably did too good of a job signing <laughs> i was probably like too personal with each message you know i almost needed to shorten it down probably but it was interesting you know you kind of mentioned how you walked in the room and everybody's excited about it right so yeah and also your um you know your autograph has value Yesterday, you were selling and saying the exact same thing on a different format, right? But now, all of a sudden, it has more perceived value, and your autograph on it has a perceived value. Very, very true. And I've never been one to get autographs. I guess I've always had exposure to people that give autographs, like whether it's sports people. And you know, I work in hockey, and I don't know. Hockey players are very humble guys generally, you know, and they're all about the team because that's how you're successful in hockey, right? Uh, and I've never ever asked anyone for an autograph. I don't think since I was a kid, because I'm always like, oh, "That's nice, you know." I'm I'm just happy to meet you. Like it's good, but it's some it's one of those things you had to get over as an author. I think it's a value add for the people you connect with. So, well, the other thing we say because of that value and you know that credibility that you get all of a sudden is um, that you can raise your prices. Hmm. So if you raise your price, just you know, usually five percent is not that noticeable. So um, once you have that book out, especially if you're a bestseller, then you should raise your price 5%. Interesting. It goes along with you know the value that you're bringing and the credibility that you have in the marketplace now. Wow, that's amazing. And then you'd mentioned to me, and I think you kind of alluded to this since we've been recording, but you have like 1,500 of your own titles now that yeah. are out there. So I don't know if you want to talk about that, like what that experience has been like and what that's brought to you. You know, it's really been an amazing experience. I was at a mastermind group and they talked about one of the books we had, we should make a journal for it to go along with it because it's um, called How to Write Your Life 
legacy. Mm -hmm. And um, so it has a bunch of questions that are prompts in it. They said, you should make a journal, blank journal to go so people have extra room with the same cover. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. And then um, the book started to sell and it was like an addiction. All of a sudden, I, Jen and I just got like, oh my gosh, like if we put more books out, more journals. And so we st <clears throat> excuse me, started doing some research and finding different niches in journals and um, getting mentored in it. And one thing led to another and we just came up with a system and we just have just been crushing it. So our goal this year is to add another 2,000 titles. Um, Holy so smokes. Blank journals, we have fitness journals, we have prayer journals, we have um, planners, which is kind of a funny story. So um, <clears throat> a year and a half ago was one of our first things that we put out there. I was inspired by Grant Cardone. He was talking about his 10X journal. Right. So I did his 10X journal and I made something kind of similar to it. And um, and we have a series of those on Amazon. So they're elite planners. They're called elite um, elite, uh, elite online publishing. It's under our thing called the Daily Planners. And we have a whole series of them. And it's about writing your goals in the morning, doing a little exercise thing, hitting your targets, your successes for the day, and then writing your goals at night. And then it has a place to put your appointments and things like that. So we kind of started with that, and then um, Jen had this epiphany. She was visiting a resort that her uncle owned, these little cabins, and she driving home. She goes, "I've had this epiphany. I think we should do guest books." So I'm like, All "Guest right. books? Oh, right. Okay. So like, I go to a location and I sign into the guest book. Like for Airbnb and VRBO places and right. vacation homes. And so we started with a cabin guest book because she stayed at cabins, and then she said, "Let's do one for each state." So um, we just have crushed the guest book industry we have in the funeral guest books oh my god books, that's crazy wedding shower guest books what? um so baptism guest books we're so we've just like started to try and um we're taking the 10x rule and saying let's just try and dominate those categories oh my god yeah that's amazing <clears throat> that's really interesting and it is addictive because you go on every morning and you check and say, how many books did we sell today? You know, it's like cool to see how much it's grown from last year to this year. And, oh, we made a little money today. That's nice. That's you know? cool, right? That's amazing. It's good passive income. So um, as far as, you know, as far as the f future, it sounds like what you're saying is everyone that's, you know, I, I see this sea change of people that are going from working for someone else to freelance. And I think for a long time, because you know, there's this overemphasis upon branded education, right? It's like get get a degree, go get a good job, and that's you know very successful for a lot of people. But those companies are cluing in that they can automate things and they can put software in place, and a lot of those jobs are becoming like not as valuable, and they don't want to invest in in people that way. So I, th I think what the stats are is that by 2030, there's gonna it's gonna go from 110 or 120 million people that are working for someone and 64 million freelancers to 87 and 84. Wow. So it, I think what you're describing is that, you know, suddenly you've got all these people that are choosing probably, I think the better people, and then it's going to be the, the better people. And then the people at the bottom, they're going to be you know, out in the street doing their own thing. And these guys will probably figure it out. And these guys have, are like, you know, fire hose reluctantly out there, right? But a book, it sounds like what you're saying is a way to demonstrate what your expertise is and is kind of that, you know, the new calling card in a sense. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, it's just to set, everyone has knowledge in something, and so you can set yourself apart. The other thing I'm finding out is I've had several friends that are 45 years old to 48 years old, and for whatever reason, they've uh, lost their job. Mm -hmm. Whether they left their job willingly or um, you know one of them the company closed up and so they were very good at what they did and they are having the hardest time finding employment it's different because they're telling oh well you're the nice way to say that you're too old they just say you're overqualified oh for sure absolutely and I mean the, yeah. what are they <laughs> your bulk of experience is worth less now in that environment right because mm -hmm. They invest heavily in training, but also to your point, like there's there's financial weight that goes with this, <laughs> and that's kind of why I see to your point, like they're out in the street, right? <laughs> and they're like, well, I need new skills to package me, or I sit there, like I'm not going to do anything, right? Yeah. So yeah. you have to repackage. So the one guy, he applied for 700 jobs. What? 700 jobs. Can you imagine if he made 700 cold calls? Yeah, I mean, he sent resumes out. He made calls. 
he was even they were opening up a new hotel he was a medical recruiter and they were opening up a new hotel locally he was the first one in line at 6 a.m what and he didn't even get a call back but why you know see this is the mentality that kind of blows me away where if you made 700 cold calls with your book what results would you get yeah it's like hey i'm holding an event i'm not the guy at your event and i think that's what people need to clue in it's funny that it's that age that we have to clue in but even the kids i think there's way more opportunity where if you made 700 calls to your target audience would you get 1% or 5% callback? You would get seven to 10 opportunities to come out of that, right? That would be paying clients or something. Like it seems. You only got um, really only one job offer. offer wow. Took out of all of that. Man. So I guess the thing is those people are going to have to transition and go into different fields that like real estate, consulting, something. Um, there's no barrier to entry. Right. And create your own niche. Um, by writing a book, show your expertise, and then turn it into a consulting business or something. Because, Makes sense. Uh, at forty-five, you're you can't get a job. It's crazy. Yeah, and I I, 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 I think that you know the the big message that I I hope people take away from that is that it's not hopeless, but you've got to change your your mindset. You've got to realize there's bigger opportunity and money. You have to take responsibility for, as Grant Cardone says, build your own economy, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, to teach my kids that um good now. good I still them to go to college but um but i think they have to build their own economy i uh i have very definitive ideas about education yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. and it's yeah, that might be a whole it's definitely something <laughs> it might be an event that we can invite you to that and so just to switch gears a little bit we both uh we're in the 10x ambassador program what was kind of your takeaway from that and what was your experience because that was like a 60 plus day mentoring program with some virtual coaching and what was your feedback on that? Um, my favorite thing was the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a Facebook group that's been so interactive, so pumped up, so ready to go. So everybody's in different time zones, right? So yep. um, I'm in the central time zone and by the time I woke up and the, the deal is wake up before the sun. Right. It's one of the things that they're saying, wake up before the sun, get your goals written, get your exercise in. And so when I would wake up, people were already up so from the other time zone they're like hey I'm up I got my workout in I'm 10 x and I'm doing this I'm doing that and if you didn't get up you just feel like a slacker already so it's like man they're already moving they're like, I gotta go and I gotta get this stuff going and um, I want to say we re I just did the math on how many proposals we sent out in the last 60 days we've sent about 30 proposals out damn in days Wow I that's crazy shocked. That's like every other day we were sending a proposal. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So, I mean, it's just, I think that was so motivating being in that group was the, the biggest thing about it that, that I got out of it. And the training from the Cardone Union was pretty good. I like listening to that. The thing I didn't like about it is you have to take tests. After all that, <laughs> I was like, seriously? Uh, yeah. Um, it was good content. If you look at my test scores, it'll probably reflect how I took those tests. Like no, oh really? I learned from the test. That's <laughs> bad. Yeah, that's why I was just like, uh, you're lucky you couldn't. You're almost lucky I wasn't allowed to forward through some of the videos because it's like, okay, I'm just gonna do this test cold. That was kind of how I was doing them, and I'll learn from how the test is coming back to how I should answer sometimes. But I think you miss a little bit out of that. There, there's some really good material in that for me as well. I think initially, as I think I think I mentioned you off camera, that the basic stuff wasn't um, exciting to me, but there's some definitely some newer stuff on follow up and uh, prospecting and building lists, and that I I, I gathered a lot of benefit from for sure. You know, if you go through different sales training, like I've been through Keller Williams uh, sales training, mm -hmm. a lot of it is always the, is the same. There's the same core to sure. a lot of stuff. It's you know, getting leads, get as many leads as you can, follow up with those leads, you know, connect with them, and then turn them into clients. Right. So the leads you have, it's that sales funnel. So you've just got to make those calls and uh, make the follow up calls. And uh, I think it's so cool. We were talking about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. You just can't keep up with technology. It's like all the different ways to follow up. There's another layer in there. Mm -hmm. And I know Keller Williams is pretty cool too. They have a whole system for you with your emails. And it even tells you, 
like, okay, today you're sending an email, today you're sending a gift. Oh, today wow. A call, and here's it's... your script for your phone call. Right. So, so, like, wow, they do a script for your phone call, and then, okay, next day, here's the email that's going to go out for you. So they're doing the, like, the assisted, sale, like, a decision support, really, is kind of what they call that, where it's prompting you. It's giving you the reminders, you're saying. Well, no, it actually does it for you. No, so you're kidding. Reminder, it's telling you this is what's happening. Yeah, so it, oh, like you smart. have a soft or Kajabi, right? And you yeah. have your load up. So it has like you, you say, okay, I want to uh, do this sales funnel. And in the sales funnel, it already has the emails that'll go like, let's say it's going to send eight emails out over the Got course it. of uh, a month yep. or two months. And then in between the emails, it has prompts and it says, okay, today, like we're not sending an email, but you're supposed to call and right. here's your call script. Yep. That you're supposed to call. I love it. That's amazing. Okay. That's kind of the stuff that we help companies with. So like on the cloud advisory side, we're like, so one, one of the things they did in that group was um, they had the grant 365 follow-up process. Uh -huh. I don't know if you saw that, but I posted a video of how I use reply.io to basically automate that. Wow. And and then it ties into whatever your CRM is. I show how to do that using Zapier. So um, I think you hit it. It's really exciting for me to hear that Keller Williams does that for its agents. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I was shocked. And they said they're coming out with um, where when you put the lead in there, it'll search to see if they have a Facebook page. They'll, oh, um, wow. they got an interesting system. Yeah. I mean, they, they haven't. I, they haven't rolled this out yet, but they're telling us that it's coming. And then they'll notify you. Like they gave the example of, like, let's say you're watching whoever it is, Johnny Smith, and they'll they'll notify, hey, Johnny Smith just got a new puppy on Facebook. So comment. So you're like, oh, that's a reason for me to say, hey, Johnny. That's interesting. So they're using social monitoring, basically, of tags or profiles to pull that data in. Are they are they using Salesforce for that, or what are they using? They have their own. They bought their own uh, company. And, oh, they did! Uh, wow. Mm -hmm. So they're doing it themselves. It's, they they bought the they had someone else that was doing it, and then they bought the software, and it's all in house now. Wow, that's incredible! I'll have to keep my eyes open for that. I'll have to see if I can weasel my way in there. And the Keller Williams guy has written a book that's actually really good, which is the one I think, or the one thing, right? Yeah, he's got that book, and then the Millionaire uh, Realtor. I think the Millionaire really Realtor. Pretty good too. I'm really reading that now, and the one thing's really good too. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, now, you, you went to Las Vegas for the 10X Growth Con, and I know we talked a little bit about that. What was kind of your takeaway from that, and what was your experience? So a lot of good content. I don't have my notes in front of me here, but um, there were some really great speakers. Uh, Grant, I loved how he kind of pared down the sale experience about you have an idea, you have to get someone's attention, right. have the intent. Yep. The idea may be, oh man, I've got this great product, now I've got to get attention, so you want to post it out on Facebook or let people know about it and get draw mm -hmm. attention to yourself. And then the intent is, I want you to have this so it'll make your business grow. And then um, you know, contact them, follow up with them, and then serve them. And I love what he said is sometimes you can move that up in the process. You know, you can have the idea and get their attention, and then try and close them on the deal. You don't have to go through all the steps all the time. And he did the example of this by usually you go to one of these conferences and it's kind of warm and fuzzy. They start to give you a lot of content and then they will maybe pitch you something. No, they had the big intro. The first thing is Jared, who's his like number one guy, walks out on stage and goes, hey, we want you to buy this. And we yeah, they were hammering you right away. We want you to buy this and <laughs> get it now, get it in the wow. beginning so it's fresh out. And then, okay, now we're going to have a great show. Let's get started. He started selling right in the beginning. It's after he got, crazy. He got right? our attention with the opening, and then they sold us, tried to close us right there. That's funny. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I think I mentioned I have a couple events that I'm I'm just going to I've, – I've sort of announced the one, which – and I think the takeaway for that event is don't be afraid to sell. <laughs> I don't want to maybe, I don't know, I guess I have to think about how that works. But it, it was obvious from the stage that, you know, guy, Russell Brunson, I think, set the ultimate example, right? He was amazing. Yeah, which was, he got everybody, like 1,200 people or something to buy ClickFunnels, which is a really good platform, like great software yeah. platform. But it's, uh, you know, he had people streaming to tables with little, uh, sheets of paper with their order and it was like threefold so it was like the carbon copy of the order yeah. it was like old school right yeah, yeah. and he it built old. it was really interesting I, I think his structure was really cool but it was also I think someone else had mentioned in the group which was okay anyone else have deal fatigue yeah 
I have a deal for you. <laughs> it was, that was the only disappointing thing to me was that everybody, every single guy got up there to pitch. Right. And um, I would have liked more content and less pitching. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you're like, oh, I'm just tired of hearing, like, okay, the, I can walk out now because they're just going to try and sell me now. Like, they gave me a little bit of content in the beginning. Now that I know the rest is just the pitch. I think day two was, so day one was supposed to be this billion dollar sales summit. Um, I'm not sure how much sales content was in there, but it was it was good. There was good speakers, and they too were all the younger like internet marketer type guys. And uh, you know, Russell Brunson set the stage. Well, he's not that young, but he's he looks young. <laughs> he's 25. But I think he set the tone where who, Russell Brunson's 25. No, I said he looks like. Oh yeah, he looks like a baby, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not that young. I think he might be older than me, but. Um, He's at the tone where all these guys that you knew they were going to pitch because that's what they do on the internet and it's unabashed, right? But day right. three I thought was really positive where there was, uh, I think Michael Burt was on day three and Lewis Howes and Tim Story and then Tim Grover kicked butt like he did great. And Grant, Grant Cardone and Elena Cardone were really good on that day too. So it kind of like gave us a little bit of a reprieve on day three. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, so I, I, don't, I, I want to be conscious of your time. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to wrap this up with two questions. Okay. okay. And the first one is, how are you, Melanie, changing the world? You know, I think it's by getting people's great stories out there and um, not keeping them all to themselves, but uh, exposing them to the world and sharing their stories with the world, whether it's for their business, their expertise, or I'm really big on leaving a legacy. I've done a TEDx talk on leaving a legacy. Oh, great. And just think that's huge of um, and it comes with information too you know if you're not going to leave your information behind then you're not helping the generations to follow so success leaves clues and so does failure so I'm really passionate about telling your story leaving a legacy and helping uh, the next generations behind you I just think it's so important and, and I think we have a vehicle to do that that's amazing I, lo I love that answer uh, the final thing that I'll wrap up on I always put my guests on the spot at the end which is when we have interesting guests on, we want you to nominate someone that is also an interesting guest that keeps with kind of the themes that we talk about. Expert or entrepreneur, we usually talk about digital product creation, but also automating marketing, sales, and support. So sometimes it's about the entrepreneurial journey, sometimes it's they're an expert in one of those areas. So I want you to nominate someone to appear on another episode of the Automate and Grow podcast. Well, Dina, I'm gonna be really, I, I gotta get my business partner, because she does all the tech okay all the back end oh cool okay stuff yeah. and um, like she's the one who got us on on alexa but she's way more knowledgeable on the technology side and um i just think she'd be a great guest jen foster from elite online publishing okay so jen foster you've been nominated that should hopefully be an easy introduction yep. <laughs> and um melanie i want i want to thank you for appearing on this i know we could go on and on between the two of us, we both had the ability probably to keep talking. So, <laughs> uh, but I found this has been, it's been really nice to get to know you. Um, and I'm glad to hear your perspective on things. And I love the work that you're doing with authors and people that are non-traditional authors. So thank you very much for the, the work that you do. Thanks, Michael. It's been a pleasure to be here today. Honor to be here. Thanks. And this has been another, this is a special episode of Automate and Grow. And we will see you on, with Jen, hopefully on a very, Another special episode. Was Jen in the program, by the way? Yeah, she was at 10X with me. Oh, she was. Great. Okay, so we can get some perspective on that as well. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you very much, and this has been another episode of Automate and Grow. This has been an episode of the Automate and Grow podcast. Check out other episodes for interesting topics on how to grow, innovate, and automate your business. Subscribe or like us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, or on our website at www.automategrow.biz and get your copy of the book Automate and Grow at Amazon today.